all right so good morning everyone those who have joined already and uh, we shall be waiting here for like two more minutes for more people to join and then we shall actually officially start so uh, so please uh, before i can start please let me know what you remember from our uh, physical classes on microprocessor and microcontrollers right so <coughs> the idea is that we are going to uh, start from where we left off and uh, in order to do that, uh, we shall uh, kind of assume that you remember everything that we studied in our actual physical classes. So if you don't, uh, then um, don't worry, uh, we shall have a, a small recap of everything that we actually did earlier, that we studied earlier and okay, and just let me know what you, uh, so today I actually wanted to do assembly language programming actually we had a class on assembly language programming if you recall but uh, unfortunately um, that was abruptly ended right and uh, once again uh, good morning and welcome to uh, welcome to all of you for your attendance please write uh, and if you are using your um, correct name actual name on your google account then uh, write uh, write anything on the live chat okay uh, anything on the live chat and i have a program that pulls down everything from the live chat and gives you the attendance accordingly so if you are using your real name write anything on the live chat post a question or something say good morning or whatever okay and if you are not using your uh, real name uh, write down your real name or put some identification that uh, lets me identify you and so accordingly you shall get the attendance and that's as far as that one goes right so with that said, um, I believe all of you can all of um, uh, all of you are somewhat familiar with this YouTube live streaming thing, right? And uh, one more thing, if you are using a mobile device, I strongly recommend that you switch to a computer. Okay, I mean, uh, if you uh, do it on a mobile device, soon you shall see that it'll be kind of difficult for you to actually see what I'm doing here, because we shall do a programming here, right? Assembly language programming. So that way, uh, it'll be kind of difficult for you to uh, understand right and uh, please let me know if the audio quality and video quality is fine and again if you are using a mobile device you cannot go beyond 480p because of the current uh, ongoing pandemic situation okay all um, mobile streaming has been capped to 480p so you cannot move beyond that so i would strongly recommend that you switch to a computer if you have one with you and with that said if you have any question feel free to post them on the youtube live stream uh, live chat here and i am constantly monitoring the live chat while i'm talking here and uh, writing anything here so with that said uh, please feel free to ask any question that you might have okay any question that you might have because um, uh, this is not going to be what should i say like this kind of live streaming and for example this kind of online classes are never going to be as close as a typical classroom uh, discussion right so uh, with that said some uh, something i am telling here might get lost in translation for example per se so if you are unable to understand something feel free to ask right and i have taken quite a few classes uh, like uh, two hour long classes for your uh, second year friends uh, and um, they have kind of enjoyed those classes and here for you this is going to be the first class here so i'm telling you all these things that are prerequisite here right so earlier you might have recalled that i gave you a certain software okay and uh, it was java based software and you were supposed to actually install that and if you haven't that have haven't done that yet uh, feel free to ask me if you have facing any difficulty or i would strongly recommend that you install that and do that uh, run that here run that uh, while we are actually doing the classes so in any case this is going to be kind of um, mostly a recap as well as uh, new topics that we are going to study today so so far what we have studied what we have studied so far do include these things and again if you face any difficulty regarding the audio and video quality or anything like that okay please feel free to let me know so so far we have uh, studied uh, the pin diagram pin out of 
so far we have seen that first of all okay the second we have studied the architecture of architecture of 8085 okay so we have uh, studied the architecture yeah again those who came late please write something on the live chat and if you are using your real name you don't have to give me your id or anything i have a custom python script that actually pulls everything from the live chat and identifies all the individual people there and if you're using your actual name uh, you get the attendance right away all right so with that said and if you're not using your actual name okay then please write down your roll number okay right so we studied that we studied how uh, instructions are executed machine cycles instruction cycles instructions how instructions uh, really work and we studied how instructions are executed all right so we did um, study that right all right so so please uh, i mean i'm monitoring the live chat again so please let me know um, what you recall from our last classes, right? Where should I start from, start back from? Right. So let me go to that. All right, so yeah, if you recall that was our syllabus. I'm not entirely sure how much we can complete here. Okay, so let's um, go to this. So we actually discussed earlier. We discussed um, uh, about kind of the history of the eight zero eight five microprocessor. So I'm not going to uh, going to go into that details of those. And again, this video will be available after the live stream, so you can go back and refer to it anytime you want. And again, everything I write today will be given to you, so no issues there. So only try yeah so no issues um, i mean you don't have any point writing everything down right you don't have to write anything down okay just keep in mind that everything that we are doing today will be given to you all the videos will be available after the live stream so yes um, and again post your questions on the uh, live chat so we discussed that so again we discussed the difference between von neumann architecture and harvard architecture we specifically described something called the von neumann uh, bottleneck where the idea is that in von Neumann, in the classical von Neumann architecture, what happens is the memory unit is directly connected to the central processing unit. And, and here what happens is that from the memory unit, all the instructions and data are fetched uh, sequentially. So what I mean is that when an instruction is fetched from by the pro uh, central processing unit from the memory unit, during that instruction fetch time, the central processing unit cannot fetch a data similarly when the central processing unit is fetching some data from the memory unit it cannot fetch any instruction so everything is sequential okay and all almost all modern microprocessors do use this von neumann architecture in of course in a heavily modified form this actually goes back to 1945 so it's a i mean very old architecture per se okay and in the harvard architecture what we have we have separate memories for instruction and data okay so the control unit can logically pull instructions and data all at the same time and what i mean by instruction and data we shall see uh, later on i um, mean we have seen already let's we shall actually have a recap on that and this is the entire architecture of 8085 i am not going into the details of that but if you do if you do want me to go into the details of that in case if you have forgotten everything okay please let me know i shall arrange another class later on uh, on this okay because these are the topics we actually discussed so i'm just giving a giving you a recap, recap of what you actually studied right so uh, with that said and this was the pinout diagram of 8085 microprocessor this is the actual pinout diagram it's a 40 pin die okay 40 pin uh, deep dual inline pin package here you have 20 pins here and 20 pins here and we actually discussed all the different pins here and here this is called the functional pinout diagram where we actually studied how this uh, all the different uh, types of pins here are actually combined in nature 
right so important point to note here are these pins here okay from ad0 ad1 ad2 and so on up to and for example up to ad7 and then a8 a9 a10 a11 a12 a13 a14 a15 so this is called something called a multiplexed address and data bus okay these 16 pins are used by the microprocessor to do two different things okay send and receive addresses okay uh, mostly sending addresses okay addresses to memory devices um, connected to the microprocessor and then receiving and sending data through the lower order address bus so we have actually seen that again if you uh, don't recall anything from that and you want me to uh, arrange additional uh, classes for recapitulating everything we studied please let me know all right so again i have given you these slides i shall give you those these slides once again so that you have a ready reference for all these things and um, uh, the book will be this one for example you have seen this book right so this is the accurate for macro processor by ramesh gaukar so yeah that's going to be the book that we're actually following this is kind of the de facto standard for our accurate studying accurate for microprocessor right so again we discussed that any instruction in uh, this microprocessor execute is executed through something called an instruction cycle any instruction is executed through something called an instruction cycle and every instruction cycle is composed of different machine cycles and there are exactly nine different machine cycles in 8085 no more no less and every instruction is composed of some of those machine cycles and each machine cycle is executed by uh, executed um, for for example for a certain number of clock cycles okay certain number of clock cycles those clock cycles are known as t states okay so instruction cycle is a complete cycle through which a single instruction in the microprocessor is executed a machine cycle are the composition of the instruction cycle internal composition of the instruction cycle so different parts of an instruction cycle and each individual machine cycle is executed over certain clock cycles and those clock cycles are known as uh, t states right so we discussed all those things in a, a previous class and of course um, these are different control and status signals so we discussed everything in complete details right here are the nine <coughs> machine cycles that are important for us to remember because every instruction that we would ever encounter in 8085 macroprocessor are composed of few of these instructions right few of these machine cycles so instructions are composed of machine cycles so inside each instruction you have certain number of machine cycles and for most instructions the uh, instruction uh, the machine cycle of utmost importance is this opcode fetch okay this opcode fetch pretty much tells the microprocessor what to do with that particular instruction okay this opcode fetch machine cycle tells the microprocessor what to do with that particular instruction then we have different uh, uh, other uh, machine cycles namely memory read memory write io read io write of course you can understand memory reads when this machine cycle executes the microprocessor reads something from the memory and when memory write machine cycle executes the microprocessor writes something back to the memory and similarly if the microprocessor is reading something from the informer input device then an io read machine cycle is executed similarly if the microprocessor is writing something to an output device then io write um, uh, machine cycle is executed if the microprocessor is acknowledging an interrupt and we shall have detailed discussion on interrupt so don't worry if the microprocessor is microprocessor is executing um, a certain interrupt and it has acknowledged that accordingly okay then an interrupt acknowledge is sent okay and then we have three kind of reset, uh, reset uh, cycles halt hold and reset okay so hold is specifically used by something called a direct memory access device dma device when the dma device tries to read or write uh, from or to the memory then it might tell or it can tell the microprocessor to start, uh, to uh, pause for a moment so that the dma device can do its job and then hold is released so if the microprocessor is able to acknowledge the hold then it does that so hold instruction so hold machine cycle accordingly and we have uh, halt and reset instructions 
okay so these are of course understandably used by um, halt instructions and uh, halt instruction and reset instructions so yeah so we actually discuss these things in complete details i'm just keeping over a lot of things okay and these are different uh, external initiated signals among them are the interrupts and different hold hold acknowledge ready reset instruction uh, reset in reset out these signals are there again again we discussed everything here okay and this is the point where um, we discussed how a certain instruction is executed on its entirety so and we took an instruction namely this move instruction and we specifically chose this move instruction because this was a very specific instruction where this instruction only contains one machine cycle and that machine machine, uh, machine cycle was the opcode fetch machine cycle okay so this move instruction only contains one machine cycle namely the opcode fetch and we have actually shown you i had shown you how that opcode fetch machine cycle actually on any of these topics please feel free to let me ask me and i shall arrange additional classes on that so and again all these videos will be available later on so that you can actually go back and refer back to these okay all right so we discussed that and we actually had something called an entire um, list of t states whatever happens in the upward fetch so these are all the so these are the four clock cycles taken up by the upward fetch machine cycle and everything that happens throughout that upward fetch machine cycle we discussed in complete details again i am repeating myself but if you have um, if you are concerned that you uh, forgotten you have forgotten everything you feel free to ask me and <laughs> and if there is kind of enough interest about that i shall definitely uh, arrange additional classes on that but these are the topics we actually discussed in our earlier classes how address and data buses are multiplexed demultiplexed because the microprocessor uses the same address bus um, as the the lower order portion of the address bus as the data bus on as needed basis so how the microprocessor does that it does that something called a latch okay specifically the uh, <coughs> 74373 this latch okay and we actually discussed how that operation actually works by means of the ale signal okay address latch enable signal and um, we discuss these things okay so yeah so we kind of ended our discussion here uh, and we did some programming there okay and so this was kind of a recap very small recap within like 15 minutes uh, very short recap on uh, everything that we actually studied uh, most of the things that we actually studied right so uh, <laughs> let me go back and again if you are if you have any query regarding anything feel free to ask in the live live chat and uh, i shall definitely answer your questions so All right. So again, uh, uh, this is a class for the third year students, third year electrical engineering students, and we are doing we're talking about microprocessor and microcontrollers. So we had a recap, right? So let's talk about instructions. Right. So let's talk about instructions. So, I mean, there are different ways, very many different ways through which instructions can be classified in the 8085 microprocessor category. And I shall now use the word 8085, 8085 microprocessor and microprocessor interchangeably. So if I say microprocessor, you'll have to understand I am talking about 8085 microprocessor, obviously. And if I just say 8085, obviously I'm talking about 8085 microprocessor. So, so instructions in our particular scenario can be divided into many different categories based on many different criteria. Okay. And one of those criteria are how much memory does it take? Okay. Someone is asking 
do I have the PDF of the book I recommended? Unfortunately, I don't. I only have a physical copy of that. So unfortunately, I don't have access to uh, a soft copy of that. Uh, so okay, but uh, I shall try to figure one out. Okay. So with that said, <coughs> so instructions can be divided into many different categories based on many different criteria. And one of those criteria is how much memory they take up, a certain instruction take up, right? So, and based on those, an instruction uh, can be divided into possibly three categories. Okay, we have instructions that take up only one byte of memory. We have instructions that take up two bytes of memory and we have instructions that take up three bytes of memory. And these are the easiest classification that you can actually do okay these are the easiest classifications that you can do on instructions on 8285 okay so one byte instructions are specifically those instructions which take only one byte of memory on the uh, memory device right so you have to write down all the instructions before you can actually execute them and one byte instructions take one byte of memory so one byte means one byte means 8 bits right right and each memory address is of 8 bits memory uh, can store 8 bit of memory anyway so one byte instruction is only will only occupy one memory location because one memory location can store one uh, byte of uh, anything so right one byte instruction single byte instructions so one byte instruction or single byte instructions are instructions that are given by just their opcode okay so let, just, uh, given by just their mnemonic so there is no data or anything like that so if i say if i give you an instruction like this for example if i say move a comma b okay and what this instruction does this instruction and the important thing here to note is that you don't actually have to know what this instruction does in order to understand how much memory this instruction would take in the memory device namely look very carefully and try to figure that figure out that this instruction does not have any hexadecimal number appended after this and when something like this is happening this is just a single instruction try to understand this is just one instruction and what is that instruction this instruction tells you that copy something copy whatever is in uh, in register b to register a namely the accumulator right so uh, this instruction tells the microprocessor to copy everything from whatever the content of register B is to the content to register A, right? So that is what uh, what this instruction is, and this instruction does not require the microprocessor to read anything from the memory device, okay? Because the registers are internal to the microprocessor itself. So this instruction does not require mac the microprocessor to additionally read anything from the um, microprocessor or additionally um, memory device or additionally write anything to the uh, memory device okay similarly it does not do any reading or writing on the io device it does not do an interrupt or anything so it only has one single machine cycle what machine cycle so it only has something called the opcode phase okay and let me tell you any instruction that you can write down like this instruction right any instruction that you can write down would always start with something called opcode fetch because opcode fetch is very similar to a memory write what does the microprocessor do during the opcode fetch machine cycle it reads the hexadecimal opcode from the memory device okay into the microprocessor so every instruction starts with an opcode fetch I mean not every instruction but every instruction that you can write down okay so that particular hexadecimal value for the uh, opcode okay so it's called the uh, op, um, is read from the memory device by the microprocessor okay and the microprocessor has something called an instruction decoder when that opcode is received by the instruction decoder when that opcode is received by the instruction decoder the instruction decoders 
decoder it is the job of the instruction decoder to figure out what to do okay and based on the opcode received by the instruction decoder the instruction decoder understands that this is what i have to do so let me refer to the uh, gaukar's book and here in this book we have a detailed list of opcodes which unfortunately um, uh, i mean there is a way of understanding how opcodes uh, how to actually figure out the opcodes but for a moment let me just um, see what is the opcode for that yeah so the opcode for this is hexadecimal number 78 okay and very important you have to understand that in many books and any many instruction materials you would have this h written after uh, all the hexadecimal numbers but i do prefer to skip this h okay so any hexadecimal number when uh, in many instruction materials in many books you shall see all the hexadecimal numbers throughout a book on microprocessor is appended with an h to denote that it's a hexadecimal number but the thing is uh, if you look at it in slightly more intelligently okay you will realize that all the numbers that ever appear on a book that is about microprocessors are hexadecimal numbers right so numbers by default are hexadecimal in nature right so there is no point of uh, absolutely pointless this writing this h is absolutely pointless right so this is kind of pointless to write h after everything because everything is hexadecimal right so by default every number is hexadecimal so in our entire discussion at least from my perspective i shall never use this h okay but you have to remember that every number that we talk about are hexadecimal in nature unless we specify otherwise okay so again move so if this number so this is again a hexadecimal number right a single digit in hexadecimal takes up four bits of memory so this is two digits in hexadecimal so it takes up eight bits of memory namely one byte okay so when the microprocessor sees this as the instruction that it fetched from the memory through an opcode fetch machine cycle the instruction decoder in the microprocessor understands that it will have to execute this instruction and let me tell you the most beautiful thing about a microprocessor apart from uh, everything else is the <coughs> instruction decoder itself okay unfortunately since this is a beginner level course on microprocessor uh, i cannot talk about the instruction decoder architecture but if i could uh, you would learn how wonderful the instruction decoder architecture is because just by reading this th just this number okay it automatically figures out what to do with that instruction without any lookup table okay for example currently what i am doing i am looking at a table given by the uh gaukar's book right i'm looking at a table given by the gaukar's book so this kind of tables are known as look up table okay a table where i can look up things right but the microprocessor does not have any look up tables built in it specifically the l to 85 microprocessor this was too primitive to have any sort of thing like that okay so the instruction uh, instruction decoder is designed in such a wonderful way that by just reading this number as an instruction it realizes that it will have to move the content of register b to register a rather copy the content of register b to register a it understands that by just reading this uh, opcode this is known as the opcode okay so try and try yeah there are too many cars so try understanding how wonderful this thing is right so yeah i believe i got that point through uh, through to you right so move instructions are uh, one examples of how uh, one byte instructions are really there so again now you can understand why this instruction is specifically considered to be a one byte instruction okay it's considered to be a one byte instruction because it only takes up one byte of memory in the memory device and again the microprocessor itself does not have any memory apart from the registers okay so if you want to do anything on the microprocessor you shall have to connect a memory device okay which is interfaced through the address and data bus of the microprocessor okay and every instruction and every data 
is um, ex uh, read from the memory device by the microprocessor. So this is an instruction. This is stored in the memory device, right? And in order to store this particular instruction or instructions like this, you only need one byte of memory in the memory device. So these kind of instructions are known as one byte instruction or single byte instructions. Instructions that take up one, only one byte of memory, right? Similar instructions would be similarly if I say add a comma b this applies for add b comma c at anything comma anything as long as as long as it is valid okay so similar instructions would be add so if I say move a comma b yeah same thing if I say add b okay or add c or add d or add a okay this is an addition instruction this is also a single byte instruction and it does only do something called an opcode fetch right and let me again look at the opcode of this instruction yeah the opcode of this instruction is 80 again in hexadecimal okay so <coughs> again when the microprocessor Reads, reads this number from the memory device as an instruction okay I'm again I'm telling you the microprocessor should read this as an instruction not as a data okay so when the microprocessor reads this from the memory device as an instruction it immediately understands that it will have to add the content of register B with the content of register A and store everything in register A so that is what this instruction does and in order to make the microprocessor do this, all you have to do is to store this number in the memory device and let the microprocessor read this number from the memory device through an opcode fetch cycle. So the microprocessor should read this from the memory device as an instruction, not as a data. And how do we exactly ensure that? We shall see shortly. So this kind of instruction, add instruction is again another example of a one byte instruction, right? So this is again a one byte instruction. Similar instruction would be something like INR. So INR is for example, something like that. Okay. So this is an instruction. Again, these are just examples I'm telling you. Okay. This could be add B, add C, add D, add A, add H, add L, whatever, right? So INRA, this is again another instruction which only consists of the opcode fetch. Okay, and let me again uh, look at the uh, opcode for that. That's 3C. Right? So this again uh, has one byte, only one byte of memory associated with it. So again, when the microprocessor reads this from the memory device, okay, through an opcode fetch machine cycle. So when the microprocessor is reading this byte, okay, this byte from the memory device as an instruction, it understands that it will have to execute this instruction. What this instruction does, this only increments the value the microprocessor has in its register A by a value of one. So if it is containing right now 33 in the register A, then it increments that value by one, making it 34. Okay. So these instructions are examples of um, one byte instructions. So they take up only one byte of memory in the memory device. Okay. One byte of memory. So namely uh, just a single address is sufficient for storing these instructions. Okay. So one single address can store one byte of information. Okay. That information can be an instruction, can be a data. Okay. So these, these kind of instructions are one byte instructions. Okay. So how, again, how do you really understand that these are one byte instructions? Just by looking at them and realizing the fact that these instructions do not have any hexadecimal number or, or anything like that associated with it. Okay. It just has the instruction. Okay. The bare minimum instruction. Okay. Uh, these kind of instructions are all one byte instructions. So feel free to ask if you have any query and if you have uh, if you did not understand what I just told you.
Oh, INR stands for increment, increment, increment register. So INR stands for increment register A. And there is similarly an instruction called INX. Okay. INX, for example, say for example H. It tells the microprocessor to increment register pair HL. HL register pair. So increment register pair. And again, we shall discuss this while discussing the particular instructions, right? So yeah, don't worry about these, right? So what you should worry about is figuring out how much memory it should take in the uh, memory device. All right. All right. So let's talk about two byte instructions. Okay. Instructions that take up two byte. For example, let me give you an example. The most popular example would be something like this. MVI. So for example, A comma. Um, say 75 again this is a hexadecimal number so this instruction I'm telling you is a two byte instruction why is it a two byte instruction because it needs two specific things try to understand what does MVIA tell the microprocessor to do the MVIA tells the microprocessor to write something on register A Okay, to write something on the register A, but what is that something? Look at the, again. Look at the difference between move and MBI. Okay, in the move instruction, the microprocessor was being told to copy something from register B to register A, and register B, register A, all these things are internal to the microprocessor, right? So when it was told to copy from register B into register A. It did not have to look outside right because everything that it needed to do was already inside the microprocessor itself but for MVIA for this instruction I am asking the microprocessor to write something on register A but in order for to write that something on register A it will also have to read that something from the memory device okay so this instruction copies the number 75 onto register A. But where is this number 75 residing? This number 75 is residing on the memory device itself, right? On the memory device itself. So in order to write this instruction on the memory device, I shall require two bytes of information. One byte for the opcode of MVIA so that the instruction decoder knows what to do okay and what exactly are we doing here we are copying something from the memory device into register a okay so i have one opcode namely an instruction and what am i copying i am copying a certain data from the register from the memory device into the register right so i am reading one byte as an opcode and then i am reading one byte as a uh, data and again, let me uh, look at the lookup table and let me see what this opcode is. I'm saying MVIA, so 3E. So the instruction for MVIA is three A. Okay. So when it reads three A as an instruction from the memory device through an opcode fetch machine cycle, the microprocessor understands that it will now have to copy something from the memory into register A, right? Again, I'm repeating. When the microprocessor reads, and again, I'm telling you, the memory device is outside the microprocessor. So the memory device is not inside the microprocessor, right? So when it has to read something or write something from or to the memory, memory, it will have to do some shenanigans inside right because these things are not built in to the microprocessor and when the microprocessor reads this 3a from the memory device okay with um, by means of an opcode fetch machine cycle and again every instruction that you can write down starts with an opcode fetch because before you can do anything you have to understand what you are doing right 
okay right before you can do something you have to understand what you are doing right because just like you came to the class prepared knowing that you are going to study microprocessor right if i randomly went up and said okay i am going to take a class on something you wouldn't know right so the microprocessor needs to know what it wants to do what it it is supposed to do and how does it know that it knows that by means of an opcode fetch okay so every instructions that you can write down starts with an opcode fetch machine cycle and through that opcode fetch machine cycle the microprocessor understands what it needs to do now the microprocessor has read an opcode of 3a okay through an uh, opcode fetch machine cycle so this is received as an instruction by the microprocessor and the instruction decoder now knows that it will have to copy something from the memory to register a right copy something from the memory to register a so in the memory on the next memory address it will need to have this particular data right so this particular data needs to reside on the memory on the next memory address for example if this is memory address 8007 then it should be at 8008 on just the next memory address okay so what does the microprocessor do next <clears throat> after doing the upward fetch machine cycle it does something called a memory read machine cycle so now it does read from the memory okay so through this upward fetch machine cycle the microprocessor knows that it will have to now read from the memory and then it reads from the memory so now this machine cycle this um, instruction has two machine cycles this instruction has two machine cycles but that is not why it has two bytes okay okay again just to tell you to make it very very clear number of bytes has got no direct correlation between the number of machine cycles a certain instruction executes it has some correlation but that's not everything so don't be under a false assumption that the number of machine cycles directly denote how much bytes the instruction requires because soon because very soon we shall see that instructions taking up five machine cycles only a three byte instructions okay so yes so it this has got nothing to do with how much bytes the instruction takes up okay so how much byte the instruction takes up is entirely determined by how much memory I need to store the entire instruction right so how much memory do I need to store this entire instruction I need two bytes of memory two specific memory locations or rather two consecutive memory locations to store this instruction one for the instruction itself which is this opcode and one for the data that comes with the instruction right one for the instruction itself and one for the data that comes with the instruction okay that determines how much bytes this instruction has okay requires so it's a two byte instruction uh, because of that particular reason right <clears throat> all right so with that said this is one of the foremost examples of two byte instructions you are going to ever encounter and again, feel free to ask if you have any query regarding anything. Okay. <clears throat> so let's talk about three byte instructions. Okay. Let's bring it down. Okay. So let's talk about uh, three byte instructions. So again, now of course you can understand three byte instructions would be uh, those instructions which require three bytes of memory to store them on the memory device and of course the first byte of memory would always be the opcode fetch so let's write a very common example common instruction that is of three bytes and that instruction would be sta so for this instruction what i am asking the microprocessor to do is to store the content of the accumulator or register a onto a memory location right so what I'm asking the microprocessor to do right now here through this instruction is to store the content of register A. Again, 
register A is inside the microprocessor, but the memory is outside the microprocessor. Okay, register A is inside the microprocessor, but the memory is outside the microprocessor. And through this instruction, I am asking the microprocessor to write whatever it has currently in the accumulator or register A onto a certain memory location, right? So again, this is just an instruction and that instruction should start with an opcode fetch, right? So it will need to have something called an opcode fetch again. And what is the opcode for STA? Uh, let me look at look that up. It took me a while to figure that out. Okay, right. So when the microprocessor reads 32, this this number from a, from the memory device through an opcode fetch as an instruction. Okay. So when the microprocessor reads this as an instruction, it knows it needs to store the content of register A or the accumulator onto a certain memory location, right? A certain memory location. Now what memory location? It needs to know the memory location, right? It needs to know the memory location. So with STA, this instruction, we always pass in the memory location. Now for the microprocessor we are talking about, we are talking about 8085 and 8085 microprocessor has an address bus of 16 bits. So all the memory addresses are given by a 16 bit binary number. So all the memory addresses are 16 bit binary numbers. So in hexadecimal, they take up four digits. So it's a four digit hexadecimal number for every memory address, right? So a memory address is designated by a four digit hexadecimal number or a 16 bit binary number because the microprocessor has 16 uh, pins for the address bus, right? So with that said, every address is a 16 bit address in 8085 microprocessor. So with STA, this instruction, I would have to write down the memory location, right? So if I write something like, say, for example, uh, C050, something like that. If I write something like that, then what does this immediately tell you? It immediately tells you, or it immediately is trying to tell the microprocessor that, okay, so what do you know from this instruction? We as human beings, we understand that we are asking the microprocessor to store the content of the accumulator onto the memory location C050, right? Onto the memory location C050. But the microprocessor will have to know that, right? So with the bare minimum of code fetch, it only knows that it is required to store the content of the accumulator or content of register A. But where exactly? It does not know yet. It does not know yet. So in order to know that, it will have to now read the memory address, right? On which yet it is trying to store the uh, instruction, uh, store the content of register A. So from after the opcode fetch, it will now have to do memory read in order to read the memory address, right? Now, by a single memory read, it can only read one byte, okay? By a single memory read, it can only read one byte of information on one byte of data. And that data is in particular is this memory, right? Now, by one memory read machine cycle, the microprocessor can do only, uh, can read only eight bytes of information, eight bits of information. So one byte, right? And here comes a, uh, a terminology called a little endian architecture. Okay, so in a little endian syntax, okay, every data is stored in the reverse byte order. So lower order byte uh, gets precedence over the higher order byte. So lower order 
so in a sense that's a bad word to use but the thing is the lower order information okay so in any data or any address or whatever the lower order byte is represented first or stored first then the higher order byte so what i mean is that while storing the address in the, in little in little indian microprocessors for example all the intel microprocessors are little indian in nature there used to be i mean there still is an architecture called uh, ibm power architecture okay which was used to be used by apple uh, at a certain point of time nowadays ibm power is specific only used in uh, data centers okay in mainframes in ibm power architecture ibm power architecture is an example of a big indian architecture just the opposite so a higher order byte would come first then lower order byte but for little indian microprocessors we store the lower order byte first then the higher order byte so this memory address will be stored like 50 and then c0 right so this is the first part of the memory address the microprocessor is going to read then this is the second part of the memory address the microprocessor is going to read so it is going to do two memory read machine cycles after the opcode opcode fetch machine cycle mbi ax code okay someone is asking mbi a okay did i say 3a okay forget that this uh, yeah sure sure thank you so this was just 3e okay that is not the important thing here okay if i write some abra 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 doesn't that don't matter you have to understand that this is just a one byte right yeah thank you for correcting because these are the things that you uh, cannot really remember but there is a way through which you can actually i mean figure these out okay but not we are going to not we are not going to discuss those right yeah thank you for correcting so little indian architecture as we were talking about so we store uh, these in the reverse byte order so after doing the opcode fetch the microprocessor knows it will have to store the content of register a onto memory location c05 uh, onto a certain memory location but it will have to read the memory location okay it will have to read that particular value for the memory location right so on the next memory address from the so for example say this instruction is stored at 8006 this memory location okay then from the next memory address it will read this data from memory location 8007 and from the next memory address it will read this data say for example 8008 memory location so it will do a memory read here and it will do another memory read here so now after doing the opcode fetch and two separate memory reads now the microprocessor knows that it needs to store the content of register a onto the memory location c050 right so for this instruction so for this instruction this is the instruction right so anything that is read by means of an opcode fetch cycle is considered to be the instruction right so anything that is read uh, through the opcode fetch cycle is considered to be the instruction so this is the instruction for this particular instruction <laughs> and this is the data for this instruction that you understand this is the data for this instruction so if i say uh, say so uh, this is the data for this instruction and in particular what is this data in this scenario this data is nothing but an address okay but in our context this is a data that the microprocessor is reading from the memory so the microprocessor is reading this data from the memory in this particular scenario this data is an address so i am saying uh, so this data is an address address in in this scenario right this data in particular is an address in this scenario but it could be something else right 
uh, but for all intents and purposes for the microprocessor as far as the microprocessor is concerned this is not reading this is these are not opcodes these are just data that the instruction that the microprocessor is being using as the memory location on which it is going to write the data right so that is how i need three bytes on the memory device to store this instruction so in order to store this instruction in the memory device i need to store the opcode which stands for sta and then we have a certain data after the opcode which in this specific case is a 16 bit information and in this specific case it is the address on which i am asking the microprocessor to store the content of register a so with that said it has done two memory reads but it is still yet to do its job what was the job that I, that I wanted the microprocessor to do? I wanted the microprocessor to store the content of register A onto memory location C050, right? But I don't have to store anything specifically for that. Now it is the microprocessor's responsibility to store that. So these are the instructions that would take up, these three are the instructions that would take up memory while I am writing the program. So in order for me to enter the program in the microprocessor in the memory, okay, enter in order to enter the program, I need three bytes. Okay. So I have I need three addresses. One to store the opcode phase, store the opcode, and then two more memory locations, consecutive memory locations, to store the data. In this particular case, the data is the address. Okay. So I have done my job. Now it is the microprocessor's job to do its job right and what is the microprocessor's job here i have told the microprocessor to store the content of register a onto this memory location so i can see the video clearly so please let me know if you are having any network connectivity issues because youtube is telling me that there is no issues with the network it might be that your uh, data connection has gone down or something like that. And let me assure you, this is not you because the problem is, uh, I mean, uh, as, uh, since the lockdown has begun, I mean, the internet connection has been pretty spotty for most of us. Okay. Yeah. If you're seeing a bad video feed right now, it is probably due to your connection, not mine. But again, I'm not proud of my internet connection. So, <laughs> try manually switching to the highest video quality that you can see. Don't keep it on auto. Okay, on YouTube, don't keep it on auto because YouTube prefers uh, not dropping frames. Okay, by switching to a lower quality if required. So, try switching to a particular highest video quality. Uh, and try getting rid of that auto okay so when uh, youtube says 780p auto okay it means it can switch to a lower quality if required okay so youtube story apart so what we are talking about here okay so what we are talking about here again once again so this instruction Yeah, so it's uh, the uh, in, again that is the beauty of this. I and mean, if this was class was being if this class was being held through uh, something else, some other means. Yeah, if your internet quality is dumb, if your internet is not not working, yeah, you are done for, right? Uh, but this video will be available after the stream for you to watch. So yeah, don't worry about that. So right, so now the microprocessor has read the instruction through an opcode fetch cycle and by reading that it knew that it will have to store the content of register A onto a certain memory location and it then read the memory location which was a 16 byte information 16 bit information so 2 byte information okay and it read those so these are the things that I need to store on the memory device in order for the entire instruction to be there okay right so the microprocessor has the entire instruction so that is how this instruction is three byte in nature 
is okay so this instruction is a three bytes instruction because this instruction has an uh, an instruction an opcode with it associated with a 16 bit or two byte address okay so this instruction has the opcode plus two bytes of address so this instruction requires three bytes of memory to store the entire instruction for me as a programmer for you as a programmer here okay but the microprocessor job is not done yet okay so the microprocessor has read everything now it will have to store the result onto the particular memory location so the microprocessor is now doing a memory write machine cycle so it is now doing a memory write so that's one another machine cycle okay and it stores okay the data it has in the register a onto the memory location c050 now it does a memory write and it stores whatever it had in register a into memory location c050 now it does a memory write so now i believe you can see that number of bytes used by an instruction does not have any direct correlation between how many machine cycles the uh, microprocessor would need here the microprocessor needs four machine cycles one to fetch the opcode then two to fetch uh, the memory location as two byte data and then it writes on the particular memory location by basically storing the content of register a there okay so it has four machine cycles but this is a three byte instruction so again i told you earlier that uh, number of op uh, machine cycles does not have any direct correlation between the bytes used by the instruction so this is an example of a three byte instruction okay so if you have any query feel free to ask another example of three byte instruction uh, would be for example a jump any jump instruction okay any jump instru instruction so you might have seen this kind of instructions in your laboratory classes okay so for example jump i say jump on loop something like that you have seen instructions like that jump loop right something like that but what is jump loop this is kind of a misnomer for most part okay so i say i have a certain uh, set of instructions and i'm labeling a certain instruction with this name loop okay something like that and i'm asking the microprocessor okay to go back to the instruction that had this label okay but again this is a three byte instruction one another example of a three byte instruction because in order for this jump loop to work a jump any label jump so let's say it's a label huh? jump on a certain label and we shall have programs uh, like that lots of programs like that so don't worry okay jump on a label okay so this the idea is that this label will have to be stored this label will have to be stored and what is this label this label is actually pointing to a certain memory location okay so when i say jump label it's kind of a shorthand way for us to understand things but uh, for the most part most uh, part this jump label okay whenever i have an instruction like that this is nothing but first of all an opcode fetch and let me see what is the opcode what the opcode is is yeah c3 okay so it reads the opcode and it understands now it will have to unconditionally jump so this is an unconditional jump there are way too many jumps uh, and way too many call instructions we shall see those okay so this is a jump instruction so the microprocessor now unconditionally going to jump to the memory location pointed by label so while actually writing this uh, instruction on the microprocessor you need to actually specifically tell the microprocessor about the memory location to which the program counter is going to jump by jump i mean the program counter needs to jump and what is the program counter we shall see actually we have seen that but we shall discuss later on so don't worry 
So this label for all intents and purposes is nothing but an address. So this is just an address. Okay, just an address. And since this is just an address, you can understand that it would have to read the address. Okay, so for ad, uh, of course to read the address, it's a six, it's a two byte address once again. So address is taking up two bytes. Okay, so say it will have to do now a memory read. And what will it read right now? It will read the lower order address. Okay, so if the address corresponding to this label is, for example, um, 8039, it will read 39 here. Okay, and then it will do another memory read. to read the higher order address right so namely this one this is the higher order address so it will first read 39 then 80 and that is corresponding to the label we have okay for that particular instruction okay and then it jumps okay and then it uh, makes the uh, program counter jump to that so you will see that later on you would see that uh, you would probably have some other things associated here okay uh, associated here and uh, we will see how these things really work right so we have some other uh, instructions here uh, other machine cycles here okay how a jump uh, happens how a jump takes place we shall see later on okay so we have other uh, machine cycles we, we shall probably have other machine cycles and for conditional jumps or unconditional jumps, you will see that a, num uh, a conditional jump, you might have already seen this kind of instructions in your lab, a conditional jump checks for a condition and then accordingly jumps, right? You shall see that if the condition is satisfied, then the number of machine cycles is different. Uh, machine cycles is higher, for example, and if the condition is not satisfied, then the number of machine cycles is lower that's quite weird so yes if somebody asks you uh, what is the, what are the, what is the number of machine cycles for a rather number of uh, machine cycles a number of t states used by uh, conditional jump instructions uh, the answer would be it depends on whether the condition is true or false if the condition is true it gets one additional machine cycle after all these okay and if the condition is false then nothing happens okay so yeah we shall see all those things in complete details later on okay so yeah le let's not worry about any of these right now so but feel free to ask and feel free to let me know if you have understood everything here because again this jump instruction is a three byte example of a three byte instruction where this jump has an opcode which is being fed which is being read from the memory device as an instruction through an opcode fetch machine cycle by the microprocessor and then the microprocessor knows it will have for example for this instruction it will now have to unconditionally jump to this label and this label is nothing but a memory address and this memory address is dealt exactly like this one so this instruction is again another example of a three byte instruction so namely three byte instructions are instructions where after the instruction you have an address all right three byte instructions are instructions for which after the instruction you have an address because address is two bytes okay and instruction is one byte right so that's how many bytes you need in this particular scenario right so with that said let's re uh, recap what we just said one byte instructions are those instructions for which we have just a single byte and which is the opcode there is no data byte associated with it or there is no address byte associated with it right so instructions like move add increment these instructions are typical examples of uh, a single byte instruction where the opcode fetch is enough for everything two byte instructions on the other hand are instructions where after the instruction we have one byte for the data so instruction 
then data this kind of instructions are specifically two byte instructions and for two byte instructions like that we have an opcode fetch and a memory read something like that most usually uh, of course and these instructions are two byte instructions again there could be other machine cycles after this who knows but uh, for our purposes our intents intentions you can understand that two byte instructions are instructions Af after that we have a data byte so instruction byte data byte one byte instruction we just have the instruction okay and that's enough okay that's everything for two byte instructions we have the instruction then we have a data byte and for three byte instructions we have the instruction and then we have the address byte so these are three byte instructions and these are the all in, these are all uh, instructions that you can ever write on a microprocessor so on 8085 you can only have one byte instructions two byte instructions and three byte instructions these are different byte uh, instructions of different byte lengths right so if you have any queries so far feel free to ask So I will give you a break of one minute and um, don't leave the live stream please and um, uh, think about any question that you might have regarding what we just discussed because we are going to uh, jump into programming uh, after the break like a one minute or two minutes break okay so don't leave the live stream yet okay we have a, we have a lot to come and um, okay so feel free to ask any question that you might have. All right. So I don't think uh, you had any question because none of you have posted any question. So I think this idea was clear, right? So let's jump into a programming. Let's see a very simple program, and I believe I actually we actually did that, and you have done way more complicated programs than this in your lab in your laboratory classes. So yeah, let's do that. So I believe all of you can see what I have here. So I have, so unfortunately I, we cannot do this on a uh, real microprocessor here. So we can only use an emulator. But for um, all it's worth, uh, this is a very wonderful emulator because you can actually see everything that is happening inside the microprocessor, right? 
so yes so again um i would strongly very strongly recommend that uh, you install this i mean you don't have to install this you have to install java uh, runtime environment jre version 8 and uh, somehow due to some licensing reason on oracle's website you cannot directly download java 8 right now because java 13 or java 14 is currently going on okay so i uh, sent i have sent you an installer those who are using windows i have sent you an installer um, earlier you can install java 8 and this is something called a jar file with an extension of dot j a r okay so if you have if you have the java runtime environment installed in your uh, computer okay jre installed in your computer you can on windows you can just double click on the jar file and it will automatically run through the java runtime environment okay so uh, we have this okay and this is one of the most useful programs that i have ever seen really and this came out as a, uh, as a student project by uh, this person here okay so yes so that's one, one of the wonderful things here and this program i earlier told you that this program had quite a few internal bugs which i personally corrected okay and uh, some of the instructions did not really work earlier but now all of these instructions work so if you download three this from the internet you might have a kind of a buggy version this is kind of a bug fix version anyway so in any case let's see how we actually do this on the simulator here uh, and um, this is kind of very reminiscent of the real thing i mean all of the uh, features on a real microprocessor real 8085 microprocessor is kind of available here for the most part apart from a, ve a very few specific things okay yeah i have sent you all the files and i will send you those files once again so uh, don't worry about anything here okay so let's see how uh, exactly an instruction uh, and anything is executed by the microprocessor right so earlier moments ago i told you that uh, i emphasized on a very particular term repeatedly that this has to be read by the microprocessor as an instruction right through an opcode fetch cycle again i said this will have to be read by the microprocessor as an instruction through an opcode fetch cycle similarly this will have to be read by the microprocessor as an instruction through an opcode fetch cycle so every time i say that okay i'm trying to mean something right i have to ensure that the microprocessor knows that this is not a data this is an instruction but how do i tell the microprocessor about that because if i store something on a memory try to understand i have a memory device i have stored 32 i have stored 50 i have stored c0 right i have in a memory in a microprocessor i have stored 32 i have stored 50 i have stored c0 for example in three consecutive memory locations but who is going to tell the microprocessor that this is the opcode and these are the data who is going to tell the microprocessor about that okay who is there to make sure for example that 3e is the opcode and 75 is the data why cannot 75 be another instruction who is going to ensure that okay who is going to ensure that who is going to ensure that this is fetched by an opcode fetch and not by just some random memory read okay right if this is read by the microprocessor as a mem uh, through a memory read machine cycle then the microprocessor is not going to execute mvia the microprocessor is going to execute mvia only if this is read from the memory device through an opcode fetch but somehow due to some reason if the microprocessor reads this through a memory read then this is never going to be executed because if my, this is read from the memory device as a memory read through a memory read then the microprocessor will just consider this to be a data okay not as an instruction so question is who is going to ensure that this is an instruction indeed an instruction and not as not some data right who is going to ensure that and of course the answer here is the program counter the program counter ensures that 
the instruction that is being read that memory that is being read contains an instruction okay that is ensured by something called the program counter so let me write an instruction so i am saying mbi so again i shall write everything on caps but capital letter small letter does not matter here because nothing is case sensitive in a uh, assembly language programming environment so this programming is called assembly language programming the language we are using is assembly language right so of course all these low level languages that are directly interfaced on a microprocessor so if i say mbi a comma uh, 75 and try to see that i don't have an h after this i don't have an h after this because every number that i have here is hexadecimal in nature but again one more important thing please use a computer if you are using a mobile phone because so far whatever we have done would have been visible but now this programming would not be visible on your mobile device at all unless you have a tablet or something okay <coughs> all right so i have this simple instruction mbi a okay but if you recall how you executed these instructions on a microprocessor programming board or trainer or something like that you had to specifically run certain set of um, things okay and you gave the microprocessor the initial address from which your program starts and what does that what does that particular thing do when you set the initial address of the uh, program you when you before executing the program you set the memory location of the initial address right and what does that do it sets the value for the program counter it sets the value for the program counter so <coughs> how do i <coughs> set the value for the program counter on a simulator on a programming environment where you are actually doing the assembly by an assembler we do something okay again when you are inserting all the opcodes on the microprocessor itself you are doing something called a manual assembly or a hand assembly namely okay you have instruction written on your notebook and from your notebook you are particularly writing down all the opcodes all the hexadecimal codes and you are manually entering all the hexadecimal codes this is called hand assembling or manual assembly okay but here you are we are using an assembler so we are going to write down all the instructions ourselves but we shall let the assembler generate all the opcodes for us right so first of all in order to write this instruction i have to first figure out from which memory location i am going to write this instruction okay let's say i am going to write this instruction from memory location uh, 8050 right so in order to do that we use something called assembler directives assembler directives or directives what are assembler directives assembler directives are not machine language codes or not uh, assembly language codes assembler directives are specific to the assembler to let the assembler know about a few things what few things namely <coughs> my program starts from a memory location 8050 <coughs> right <coughs> What I'm telling the microprocessor is that this instruction that I have here is stored at memory location 8050, right? Do you get the point? So with that simple thing, again, this is not a part of the assembly language code because if you're doing hand assembly and if you're entering everything by hand manually on the microprocessor, what this will look like? this will actually look like the first memory address on which you store this instruction right you are storing this instruction on this memory address right so you would do that manually now we are doing it automatically here right so let's assemble this program here and again please use a computer and if you don't have a computer i'm not entirely sure what i can tell you because um, i mean these programs would hardly be visible without a computer right so with that said if i assemble this program here okay assemble means i'm generating all the opcodes i'm storing them on the memory so look very carefully what i had earlier on the earlier earlier we had this this very example right mvi a comma 75 
it's a two byte instruction so it takes two bytes it's a two byte instruction right so it takes up two bytes of memory in the memory uh, device right so one is the opcode fetch which is 3e and then is the so one is the opcode and one is memory right right understandably and this will have to be fetched by the microprocessor through an opcode fetch and uh, and this will have to be fetched by the microprocessor from the memory device through a memory read right so uh, with that said now of course it is taking up two successive memory locations two consecutive memory locations on the microprocessor on the memory device right so try to see very very closely okay try to see very closely and please let me know if the video quality is not up to par okay i believe you can see all this right so now look at the instruction what is the instruction mvi a comma 75 i want to copy the data 75 onto register a right so to do that i have to have an opcode and i have to have a data right i have to have an opcode and i have to have a data what is the opcode opcode is 3e and what is the data data is 75 just like this one right i think you understand that but in order to store this instruction on the memory device how much memory do you need you need two bytes of memory so two consecutive memory location one memory location you can store one byte on the next memory location you can store another byte so you have two consecutive memory locations require you require two consecutive memory locations to store this instruction right but for this instruction this 3e is the opcode and this 75 is the data but i have to ensure that the microprocessor knows that that the microprocessor treats this 7e as an opcode okay right i have to ensure that the microprocessor starts the programming or starts counting the program from this memory location so now here you see all the different registers namely the accumulator the register b c d e h l and the temporary m register we shall discuss what m means later on okay then you see the flag register this flag register tells me about the status of a certain program or uh, status of an execution after executing a certain instruction okay so we shall again talk about that and uh, these we shall discuss uh, <coughs> this rim sim these are uh, related to interrupts and serial communication we shall uh, discuss that again later on okay but for our purpose right now look at these we have something called stack pointer memory pointer program status word program counter and forget about these last two okay so the most important thing you, have, you need to notice here is the program counter the program counter is responsible as the name suggests is for counting programs and program means instruction okay this is often called huh, a counter that actually counts the program again instruction counter is completely different instruction counter counts how many instructions have been executed but the program counter counts <coughs> where the instruction lies so program counter is storing a memory address okay program counter is storing a memory address so <coughs> how do i ensure that my my program counter knows where to look for the instruction i ensure that by this assembler directive i say so i ensure that the program counter knows to look for the first instruction at memory location 8050 through this begin directive through this begin directive we tell the microbus tell the assembler not the microprocessor but the assembler that okay start executing the program from memory location 8050 because that is where i have stored the first very first instruction and on a real microprocessor kit what what do you do you go to the memory location and then you hit execute right and why do you go to that memory location what are you exactly doing by going to the memory location and hitting execute when you do that you are actually setting up setting up the value for the program counter because the program counter needs to know where to look for the first instruction 
and that is all it needs to know because for the rest it will do that automatically okay we shall see shortly but now if i assemble this and go ahead step by step so all you need to have to uh, look for right now is at the program counter here okay if i execute this and go step by step okay and forward okay what happened to the program counter let's go backward okay so before i even execute the instruction now what is the value of the program counter the program counter's value has been set to 8050 not by some instruction but by a directive i gave the assembler so that the microprocessor will be told to start the program from memory location 8050 right so the program counter has now a value of 8050 okay and what is it storing it is storing the memory address of the first instruction okay and what is the memory address of the first instruction instruction is 8050 because at 8050 we have stored this opcode which is 3e which is the opcode for mvia now when the microprocessor reads that it now knows it now knows that it will have to read the next memory location as a data so the sole purpose of the program counter is to figure out what memory locations to look for instructions so if i execute this and go forward <coughs> so what has happened the microprocessor has now successfully executed the entire instruction by entire instruction i mean it has first read the opcode so it has first read the opcode and the opcode was 3e and after it has read the opcode it knows that it will now have to look for the next memory location because in the next memory location it has the data stored and it has now read the data and it has copied the data over to the accumulator or register a and now you can see the value of the accumulator has been given 75 the value of the accumulator has become 75 because that is the data it copied from the memory device onto the accumulator but look carefully what happened to the program counter the program counter has been intelligently incremented to 8052 now question is what is 8052 okay question is what is 8052 okay for example let me just let me clear this up okay uh, clear this up uh, right so here i am storing this at memory location 8050 this is stored at 8051 so do tell me what is 8052 what is 8052 if i have another memory location 8052 because that is where my uh, program counter is currently pointing to so that is where my program counter is currently pointing to but <coughs> question is what is uh, this question is what is 8052 because the current value of the program counter is 8052 but what is that memory location so we have successfully executed a single instruction but uh, now the program counters value is 8052 so the program counter has been incremented by a value of 2 right so the microprocessor very well knew that it executed a 2 byte instruction so now the program counters value is 8052 so what is it doing it is looking for the next instruction so it is looking for the next instruction at the next plausible memory location where you can actually store an instruction right because you started storing the instruction from memory location 8050 and it was a two byte instruction so memory location 8050 and 8051 were taken up by the instruction and the data okay so the next plausible memory location where you can store the next instruction would be memory location 8052 and that is where the program counter is actually looking for the next plausible instruction right i think you got the point so when the program count when the microprocessor receives a one byte instruction the program counter is incremented by a value of one when the microprocessor receives a two byte instruction the program counter is incremented by a value of two and when the microprocessor receives a three byte instruction the program counter is incremented by a value of three 
so the microprocessor intelligently knows what it needs to look for or where it needs to look for for the next memory location next instruction because the microprocessor will have to ensure that it reads the opcodes or rather it reads the instruction through an opcode fetch because it, if it somehow messes thing, uh, things up and reads an instruction by memory read instead of an opcode fetch it will be a mess complete mess right so the memory pointer so the program counter ensures that uh, the instructions are read through opcode fetch and the uh, other data are read through memory read now if you look for the entire instruction cycle here if i look at the entire thing here okay uh, entire thing here so what what i see is the entire execution cycle or the entire machine cycle for this instruction so now as you can see uh, entire so it has two machine cycles right one opcode fetch machine cycle one memory read machine cycle so for through the opcode fetch machine cycle it fetches the instruction what is the instruction the instruction is opcode 3e so the microprocessor knows what it needs to do it needs to copy things from the memory location okay uh, it copy uh, needs to copy things from the next memory location onto the register a so it reads the data okay what is on the next memory location we have 75 as the data okay so it reads the data and it is read through the memory read machine cycle so i have two machine cycles one opcode fetch machine cycle and one memory read machine cycle now opcode fetch machine cycles can be four can take four p states or four clock cycles so these are clock cycles okay so opcode fetch machine cycle here in this particular scenario is taking up four clock cycles but there are instructions where the opcode fetch machine cycle takes up six instructions a six a six t states right even more in particular scenarios but for us the opcode fetch machine cycle takes up four t states or four clock cycles okay so opcode fetch memory uh, uh, takes up four clock cycles i will be shortly back Yeah, sorry for the interrupt. All right, uh, I think we're back. All right. Uh, so try to understand that we have an opcode fetch cycle, then a memory read cycle. Okay, and on the opcode fetch cycle, we read the instruction. The microprocessor reads the instruction, and of course, the memory fetch, uh, the memory read proceeds that later on it reads the memory. So it's a two byte instruction, and it has two machine cycles. And the beauty of this particular program is that you can actually see everything, okay, by just clicking on things. So how do I get this? I just clicked on this, or rather double clicked on this, or rather not a single click, I think. Okay, hold on. Yeah, I just clicked on this, and this popped up. So it gave me the entire uh, internals about how entire uh, clock operation, everything here that is happening okay and we actually discussed all these things and if you need further discussion on this and on a recap discussion on this i can do that later on so yes don't worry about that again okay so let's go back let's go back and i have read something on register a right similarly i can say i can read something on register b so i have read 75 on register a so let's uh, uh, read uh, say for example one a 1a on register b now the next instruction is just i am storing i am um, <coughs> copying the data 1a onto register b so mbi b again 
this is another two byte instruction right this is yet another two byte instruction okay so this two byte instruction in this particular scenario what does it do okay it again copies the date this data 1a okay 1a copies this data from the memory okay onto register b again this is a two byte instruction right so let's assemble the program and see how things what things look like so here look very carefully at memory location 8050 that is where we started we have mvia so mvia has an opcode of 3e and then of course it is preceded by succeeded by a data okay so later on it have it has a data so right so that occupies memory location 8051 so 8050 8051 these two memory locations are captured by the mvia comma 75 this instruction then why would the next instruction appear of course the next instruction would appear at memory location 8052 and recall that is exactly where the program counter was also looking for the next instruction right now the program counter is looking for the first instruction at memory location 8050 but once i execute the first instruction which is a two byte instruction the program counter will now look for the next instruction on memory location 8052 because the microprocessor itself knows that it executed a two byte instruction so the next instruction would be at memory location 8052 right so of course what does this instruction do this instruction just copy again it does an opcode fetch and one memory read okay and the opcode fetch tells the microprocessor that that okay read whatever you want from the next memory location and copy that to register b so that is what it does so if i go forward and step by step so after executing the first instruction okay this data 75 was read from the memory and pulled to the accumulator and now the program counter has been incremented to a value of 8052 so the program counter is now looking for the next instruction at 8052 so at memory location 8052 whatever is stored will be read not through a memory read but through an opcode fetch so that's the difference here so where wherever memory pointer sorry wherever the program counter points to okay those memory locations are read wherever the program counter points to those memory locations are read through an opcode fetch and not by just some memory read okay so whenever something is read by means of an opcode fetch that for example this 3e was read by means of an opcode fetch similarly this 06 uh, would have been now read by means of an opcode fetch and when that does happen this is treated as an instruction not as a data now when the microprocessor or the specifically the instruction decoder inside the microprocessor reads this as the instruction it understands it will have to now read the next memory location and whatever data it gets from the next memory location will have to be copied over to register b that is what it does similarly it has 70 states and namely uh, exactly two machine cycles and again the first one is a opcode fetch it reads the opcode and then the next machine cycle is a memory read machine cycle and uh, it does read everything from the memory and it copies over copies the data over to the register b so let's execute that okay so i have executed that and register b now contains 1a right now look at the program counter but the program counter actually knows that we have executed yet another instruction of two bytes length okay this instruction is again taking up this mbi b comma 1a this instruction again took up two bytes of memory so when it took up two bytes of memory you can now understand that it is going to look for the next instruction on the next plausible memory location right so here 8052 and 8053 has been taken up by mvi b comma 1a right so what is the next plausible memory location at which you would have the next instruction okay what is the next plausible memory location of course it is going to be 8054 so the microprocessor is looking for the next instruction at memory location 8054 i think i got that clear right 
So let's write the next instruction here. It's a very simple instruction. If I say add a b, so it's an is the next instruction does so it's a one byte instruction, right? It's a one byte instruction. The opcode is sufficient for everything. So this instruction is telling the microprocessor that add the content of register b with the content of register a and store everything in register a. Okay. So add the content of register B with that the con with the content of register A and store everything on register A and update the flag register as necessary. If there is a carry, then the carry flag will be set. If there is an auxiliary carry, auxiliary carry will be set. And accordingly, all the flag register flags will be set based on the parity of the accumulator. Okay, the parity flag will be set. If there is a negative number, whatever. So we have so many uh, things in the flag register. Those will be updated by this instruction right so let's assemble that let's assemble that now i have all these three instructions so for the first instruction was mbi a comma 75 that took up two bytes now we have mbi b comma 1a that took up two bytes now this is the one byte instruction okay this only is given by the opcode it has okay this is given by only the opcode it has like this instruction we uh, discussed this okay add b it just has an opcode fetch okay so that's one machine cycle and it is also given just one uh, memory location to store so it's a one byte instruction right so it does what it does so let's start doing the program okay so the first instruction has been executed the program counter has been implemented to h052 so it is looking for the next uh, instruction at memory location h052 so the first instruction has been executed so the accumulator now has 75 next instruction now has been executed now the accumulator has 75 and after the execution of the next instruction register b has 1a okay and the program counter is now looking for the next instruction at 508 at 8054 so this this is going to be read so this has been done so this is going to be read so this 80 for example this is going to be read as an instruction not as a data this is going to be read as an instruction okay so if i execute the next instruction so what happened of course the content of the accumulator has been added with content of register b and the result has been kept in the accumulator or register a right so that is the result so this is a sum of 75 and 1a so if you add 75 and 1a you have uh, 8f as the result and there was no carry that happened okay so the result did not overflow ff so I don't have a carry flag and so on so we shall talk about the flag and how the flags is flag register is updated later on but uh, this is what you need to understand and again after executing this instruction the micro the program counter has been given a value of 8055 so it is looking for the next instruction at memory location 8055 but what happens if I go forward if I ask the microprocessor to go forward even though I don't have any instruction after this point if I ask it to go forward the program counter got implemented nothing happened but the program counter is looking for the instruction it did not find any instruction okay so by saying it did not find anything when it did opcode fetch so try to understand when I do uh, uh, for go forward okay it is doing an opcode fetch but what is it reading from the memory it is reading 00, 0 from the memory and 00, 0 is an opcode for something 00, 0 is an opcode for something called no op n o p that's an instruction in h085 okay no op or no operation is an instruction actually okay so when the microprocessor does read 00, 0 from a memory location okay through an opcode fetch okay so if i go forward keep going forward as you can see the program counter is looking for instructions right and the next memory location it is going to look for an instruction would be 8059 for example i have go for go on i have went so far right but so far it has only read 00 00 00 00, 00. these are instructions these are valid instructions in 8085 okay and these take up four clock cycles one opcode fetch machine cycle but what opcode has it fetched it has fetched 00 00, 00 stands for do nothing no op no operation right so it has read 00, 00 and it has done nothing and the opcode has been and the program count has been incremented by a value of one because it did opcode fetch everywhere so every time the memory location is standing at a point okay even if you don't have anything there 
it would look for an opcode and it would do an opcode fetch. It will waste four clock cycles, namely one entire opcode fetch machine cycle. Now, if I go forward, what will happen? The microprocessor technically hangs at this point. Okay, the microprocessor technically hangs at this point because the program did never end. The program never ended, right? Because the microprocessor is still looking for an instruction. It is still look, reading 0000000 and so on, but it is still looking for an instruction. It is still looking for to do something, right? So I have to end the program. So when you have ended everything, you have to end the program. By doing any one of these, a halt or a hold or a reset, we have to kind of suspend or end the program, right? So we often end the program through a halt or through a reset, okay? Here in this particular software, we shall end our program through a halt instruction or we could end our program through reset instructions, okay? So with that said, so that the uh, program counter does not go on indefinitely and if that happens the microprocessor essentially hangs okay we end the program through a halt instruction or a reset instruction so namely i personally like halt instructions but it is entirely hold on okay so the microprocessor entirely um, <coughs> um, halts or rather it goes into a halt state when i give it a halt instruction then again halt instruction has something called a halt machine cycle okay uh, you uh, if you recall our um, uh, list on machine cycles okay halt instruction has an opcode fetch and then it goes to something called a bus idle state so the microprocessor goes into an idle state where it does not do anything it does not go on incrementing the program counter forever so now we have a complete program from top to bottom let's assemble and execute that so i have mvi a comma 75 go step by step go forward so i have executed the first instruction and this is what it does i have executed the next instruction and this is what it does i have added everything so this is the result now what is the value of the program counter the program counter is now looking for the next instruction at memory location 8055 but at memory location 8055 what do you have you have a halt instruction okay so next is going to read the halt instruction but before i execute the halt instruction let's look at its t states okay uh, its entire uh, right so this is what an halt instruction is in a halt instruction you, you have something called an opcode fetch machine cycle again it will have to read right in order to understand what it wants to do right so we have an opcode fetch machine cycle and then it has something called a bus idle cycle this bus idle cycle is coming from the halt machine cycle so when i did a halt okay it is now doing a halt machine cycle it is now going to do a halt machine cycle right so if i now execute this and go forward now try to understand what happens if i go on the program ended it did not make the program counter go on forever because it halted okay the program ended and uh, everything has been finished i don't have don't even have an option to go forward so when it received halt it ended executing the program so you have to finish executing the program right and that is what this halt instruction did to recap we started with this uh, assembler directive to make sure that the microprocessor knows where I am starting to write the program from. So with this, I tell the microprocessor, okay, I am starting to write my first instruction on memory location 8050 and the consecutive instructions would appear on consecutive memories. And this begin instruction, what did it do? It set the initial value of the program counter so that the microprocessor knows where to look for the first instruction of the program. Okay, and then everything happened accordingly. Okay, the, uh, the program counter was incremented as per how many bytes it uh, executed earlier. Okay, and subsequently, with a halt instruction or a reset instruction, we ended executing our program so that the program counter does not go on incrementing itself indefinitely and read 0000, which is a no operation uh, of code, right? So that is how a program really works on H285 microprocessor. So I would strongly recommend that you download this. I mean, 
yeah i have given this, this to you i strongly recommend that you copy everything uh, install the java java runtime environment and do these things at home because otherwise it is i can uh, tell you that it can rest, rest assured that you would learn nothing from this entire microprocessor course unless you do the programming yourself okay unless you have some hands on experience okay so that will be end of our discussion today and again this video will be available for you um, as long as uh, for, for the foreseeable future so um, you will get to see the video later on you can go back to this and refer back to this if you wish and if you really need and all the hands out will be given to you and I shall again send you the program so don't worry about it so uh, I will be waiting here for two or three more minutes if you have any query feel free to post them on the live chat because none of you have posted or anything on the live chat for a while so post something on the live chat so that I actually get to know that you have understood or if you have any query uh, please feel free to tell me So I'd wait here for, I mean, two more minutes. Please tell me if you have any query regarding anything. If you have concern, any, uh, if you are concerned about something, please let me know. Okay. If this method of YouTube live streaming is okay for you, and if it is not difficult for you, then please let me know. Okay. And because um, I need to have some feedback from you, right? And again, I chose this YouTube live streaming simply because this video stays up right so if the internet connection was not okay with you and sometimes let me tell you because i also had some issues with internet uh, quite a few examples of in, um, connectivity issues right while even teaching right so yeah so yes no one can ensure that uh, ensure uninterrupted internet connectivity so yes so this is kind of the preferred method for me in any case, feel free to ask if you have any question or let me know if everything was fine. Those who are watching live. Or if you have understood everything, please confirm so that I have some feedback mechanism, right? As a control system engineer, I uh, kind of like the idea of feedback, right? Of course, without feedback, you can only go so far. So um, since you don't, you people don't have any query, so we shall end our discussion right now here, and uh, uh, we shall arrange the next class according as per your convenience. So I have understood your convenient time. Your convenient time would be uh, from 11:30. Okay. So uh, we shall do our classes on 11 uh, from 11:30, and uh, uh, we shall set up our next class uh, this after discussion with your. Uh, Yes, absolutely. So uh, one of you says that is there a way where without using the programs we can find out how many cycles it will have. Yes, absolutely. Because uh, if you, I mean, this is again, I shall refer to this book. And this eight, Intel 8085 microprocessor is a very old microprocessor. This was released in 1976. And you have a detailed instruction manual coming from Intel themselves. Okay. So Intel has a detailed instruction manual and you can just 
uh, google it and google for it and you will get it it's a pdf file of course uh, there you shall have a detailed list of every single instruction that you can have on the microprocessor on this microprocessor and all the uh, clock cycles it takes okay what are the flag registers that are affected with the uh, instruction what it does and again i told you there are instructions like jump instructions and call instructions conditional jumps and conditional call instructions which take up variable number of machine cycles or variable number of clock cycles based on whether the jump condition or the call condition is true or false okay all those details are available on the instruction manual uh, that intel provides intel provided uh, and available on the internet and this book has everything literally okay so all uh, everything is uh, appearing uh, everything appears on the appendix later on uh, at the end all that individual instructions so yes without using the program you can uh, do everything but i will still recommend using the program because um, uh, this lets you play around with quite a few things including interrupts including io devices and so many other things that you shall we shall see actually later on right so with that said um, that will be the end of our discussion today uh, feel free to drop me an email if you have any query okay and i shall arrange next classes after discussing with your uh, crs and uh, uh, so thank you everyone for joining the class today and uh, patiently uh, <laughs> looking at all these things for the last two hours and stay safe thank you everyone uh, so see you on the next class thank you